Presbyterianism is a part of the Reformed tradition within Protestantism which traces its origins to the British Isles. Presbyterian churches derive their name from the Presbyterian form of church government, which is government by representative assemblies of elders. Many Reformed churches are organized this way, but the word Presbyterian, when capitalized, is often applied uniquely to the churches that trace their roots to the Scottish and English churches that bore that name and English political groups that formed during the English Civil War. Presbyterian theology typically emphasizes the sovereignty of God, the authority of the scriptures, and the necessity of grace through faith in Christ. Presbyterian church government was ensured in Scotland by the Acts of Union in 1707 which created the Kingdom of Great Britain. In fact, most Presbyterians found in England can trace a Scottish connection, and the Presbyterian denomination was also taken to North America mostly by Scots and Scots-Irish immigrants. The Presbyterian denominations in Scotland hold to the theology of John Calvin and his immediate successes. Although there are a range of theological views within contemporary Presbyterianism, local congregations of churches which use Presbyterian polity are governed by sessions made up of representatives of the congregation, a conciliar approach which is found at other levels of decision-making. Most Reformed churches which trace their history back to Scotland are either Presbyterian or Congregationalist in government. In the 20th century, some Presbyterians played an important role in the ecumenical movement, including the World Council of Churches. Many Presbyterian denominations have found ways of working together with other Reformed denominations and Christians of other traditions, especially in the World Communion of Reformed Churches. Some Presbyterian churches have entered into unions with other churches, such as Congregationalists, Lutherans, Anglicans, and Methodists. History Presbyterian history is part of the history of Christianity. But the beginning of Presbyterianism as a distinct movement occurred during the 16th century Protestant Reformation. As the Catholic Church resisted the Reformers, the Church split and different theological movements bore different denominations. Presbyterianism was especially influenced by the French theologian John Calvin, who is credited with the development of Reformed theology, and the work of John Knox, a Scotsman who studied with Calvin in Geneva, Switzerland and brought his teachings back to Scotland. The Presbyterian Church traces its ancestry back primarily to England and Scotland. In August 1560 the Parliament of Scotland adopted the Scots Confession as the Creed of the Scottish Kingdom. In December 1560, the first Book of Discipline was published, outlining important doctrinal issues but also establishing regulations for church government, including the creation of ten ecclesiastical districts with appointed superintendents which later became known as presbyteries. In time, the Scots Confession would be supplanted by the Westminster Confession of Faith, and the larger and shorter catechisms, which were formulated by the Westminster Assembly between 1643 and 1649. Characteristics Presbyterians distinguish themselves from other denominations by doctrine, institutional organization and worship, often using Book of Order to regulate common practice and order. The origins of the Presbyterian churches are in Calvinism. Many branches of Presbyterianism are remnants of previous splits from larger groups. Some of the splits have been due to doctrinal controversy while some have been caused by disagreement concerning the degree to which those ordained to church office should be required to agree with the Westminster Confession of Faith, which historically serves as an important confessional document, second only to the Bible, yet directing particularities in the standardization and translation of the Bible in Presbyterian churches. Presbyterians place great importance upon education and lifelong learning continuous study of the scriptures, theological writings, and understanding and interpretation of church doctrine are embodied in several statements of faith and catechisms formally adopted by various 
branches of the church, often referred to as subordinate standards. It is generally considered that the point of such learning is to enable one to put one's faith into practice. Some Presbyterians generally exhibit their faith in action as well as words by generosity, hospitality, and the constant pursuit of social justice and reform, as well as proclaiming the gospel of Christ. Government Presbyterian government is by councils of elders. Teaching and ruling elders are ordained and convene in the lowest council known as a session or consistory responsible for the discipline, nurture, and mission of the local congregation. Teaching elders have responsibility for teaching, worship, and performing sacraments. Pastors are called by individual congregations. A congregation issues a call for the pastor's service but this call must be ratified by the local presbytery. Ruling elders are usually laymen who are elected by the congregation and ordained to serve with the teaching elders, assuming responsibility for nurture and leadership of the congregation. Often, especially in larger congregations, the elders delegate the practicalities of buildings, finance, and temporal ministry to the needy in the congregation to a distinct group of offices. This group may variously be known as a deacon board, board of deacons, diaconate, or deacon's court. These are sometimes known as presbyters to the full congregation. Above the sessions exist presbyteries, which have area responsibilities. These are composed of teaching elders and ruling elders from each of the constituent congregations. The presbytery sends representatives to a broader regional or national assembly, generally known as the General Assembly, although an intermediate level of a synod sometimes exists. This congregation, presbytery, synod, general assembly schema is based on the historical structure of the larger Presbyterian churches, such as the Church of Scotland or the Presbyterian Church, some bodies such as the Presbyterian Church in America and the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, skip one of the steps between congregation and general assembly, and usually the step skipped is the synod. The Church of Scotland has now abolished the synod. Presbyterian governance is practiced by Presbyterian denominations and also by many other Reformed churches. Doctrine Presbyterianism is historically a confessional tradition. This has two implications. The obvious one is that confessional churches express their faith in the form of confessions of faith, which have some level of authoritative status. However, this is based on a more subtle point. In confessional churches, theology is not solely an individual matter. While individuals are encouraged to understand scripture and may challenge the current institutional understanding, theology is carried out by the community as a whole. It is this community understanding of theology that is expressed in confessions. However, there has arisen a spectrum of approaches to confessionalism. The manner of subscription, or the degree to which the official standards establish the actual doctrine of the church, turns out to be a practical matter. That is, the decisions rendered in ordination and in the courts of the church largely determine what the church means, representing the whole, by its adherence to the doctrinal standard. Some Presbyterian traditions adopt only the Westminster Confession of Faith as the doctrinal standard to which teaching elders are required to subscribe. In contrast to the larger and shorter catechisms, which are approved for use in instruction, many Presbyterian denominations, especially in North America, have adopted all of the Westminster standards as their standard of doctrine which is subordinate to the Bible. These documents are Calvinistic in their doctrinal orientation. The Presbyterian Church in Canada retains the Westminster Confession of Faith in its original form, while admitting the historical period in which it was written should be understood when it is read. The Westminster Confession is the principal subordinate standard of the Church of Scotland, but with due regard to liberty of opinion in points, which do not enter into the substance of the faith. 
This formulation represents many years of struggle over the extent to which the confession reflects the word of God and the struggle of conscience of those who came to believe it did not fully do so. Some Presbyterian churches, such as the Free Church of Scotland, have no such conscience clause. The Presbyterian Church has adopted the Book of Confessions which reflects the inclusion of other Reformed confessions in addition to the Westminster Standards. These other documents include ancient creedal statements, 16th-century Reformed confessions, and 20th-century documents. The Presbyterian Church in Canada developed the confessional document Living Faith and retains it as a subordinate standard of the denomination. It is confessional in format, yet like the Westminster Confession, draws attention back to original Bible text. Presbyterians in Ireland who rejected Calvinism and the Westminster Confessions formed the non-subscribing Presbyterian Church of Ireland. Worship and sacraments worship Presbyterian denominations that trace their heritage to the British Isles usually organize their church services. Inspired by the principles in the Directory of Public Worship, developed by the Westminster Assembly in the 1640s, this directory documented reformed worship practices and theology adopted and developed over the preceding century by British Puritans. Initially guided by John Calvin and John Knox, it was enacted as law by the Scottish Parliament, and became one of the foundational documents of Presbyterian Church legislation elsewhere. Historically, the driving principle in the development of the standards of Presbyterian worship is the regulative principle of worship, which specifies that what is not commanded is forbidden. Over subsequent centuries, many Presbyterian churches modified these prescriptions by introducing hymnody, instrumental accompaniment, and ceremonial vestments into worship. However, there is not one fixed Presbyterian worship style. Although there are set services for the Lord's Day, one can find a service to be evangelical and even revivalist in tone, or strongly liturgical, approximating the practices of Lutheranism or Anglicanism, or semi-formal, allowing for a balance of hymns, preaching, and congregational participation. Most Presbyterian churches follow the traditional liturgical year and observe the traditional holidays, holy seasons, such as Advent, Christmas, Ash Wednesday, Holy Wick, Easter, Pentecost, etc. They also make use of the appropriate seasonal liturgical colors, etc. Many incorporate ancient liturgical prayers and responses into the communion services and follow a daily, seasonal, and festival lectionary. Other Presbyterians, however, such as the Reformed Presbyterians, would practice a cappella exclusive psalmody, as well as eschew the celebration of holy days. Among the Paleo-Orthodox and emerging church movements in Protestant and Evangelical churches, in which some Presbyterians are involved, clergy are moving away from their traditional black Geneva gown to such vestments as the Alban Chase Ubel, but also cassock and surplus, which some, particularly those identifying with the liturgical renewal movement, hold to be more ancient and representative of a more ecumenical past. Sacraments Presbyterians traditionally have held the worship position that there are only two sacraments, baptism, in which they would baptize infants, as well as unbaptized adults by the aspersion or affusion method, rather than the immersion method, the Lord's Supper, in which they would believe that Christ is present in the bread and wine through the Holy Spirit as opposed to being locally present. Unlike many denominations that baptize infants on the basis of baptismal regeneration, Presbyterians, along with their continental reformed counterparts, baptize infants on the belief that as Hebrew infants were circumcised in order to show that they were part of the covenant community. Infants of believing parents are likewise to be baptized. Architecture. Early Presbyterians were careful to distinguish between the church which referred the members and the meeting house which was the building in which the church met until the late 19th century. 
Very few Presbyterians ever referred to their buildings as churches. Presbyterians believed that meeting houses are buildings to support the worship of God. The decor in some instances was austere so as not to detract from worship. Early Presbyterian meeting houses were extremely plain. No stained glass, no elaborate furnishings, and no images were to be found in the meeting house. The pulpit, often raised so as only to be accessible by a staircase, was the centerpiece of the building. In the late 19th century a gradual shift began to occur. Prosperous congregations built imposing churches, such as Fourth Presbyterian in Chicago, Madison Avenue Presbyterian and Fifth Avenue Presbyterian in New York City, Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, East Liberty Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, First Presbyterian in Dallas, House of Hope Presbyterian Presbyterian Church in St. Paul, Minnesota Independent Presbyterian Church, Alabama plus many others. Usually a Presbyterian church will not have statues of saints, nor the ornate altar more typical of a Roman Catholic church. Instead, one will find a communion table, usually on the same level as the congregation. There may be a rail between the communion table and the chancel behind it, which may contain a more decorative altar-type table, choir loft, or choir stalls, lectern and clergy area. The altar is called the communion table and the altar area is called the chancel by Presbyterians. In a Presbyterian there may be an altar cross, either on the communion table or on a table in the chancel. By using the empty cross or cross of the resurrection, Presbyterians emphasize the resurrection and that Christ is not continually dying, but died once and is alive for all eternity. Some Presbyterian church buildings are often decorated with a cross that has a circle around the center, or Celtic cross. This not only emphasized the resurrection, but also acknowledges historical aspects of Presbyterianism. A baptismal font will be located either at the entrance or near the chancel area. Presbyterian architecture generally makes significant use of symbolism. You may also find decorative in ornate stained glass windows depicting scenes from the Bible. Some Presbyterian churches will also have ornate statues of Christ or graven scenes from the Last Supper located behind the chancel. Saint Giles Cathedral does have a crucifix next to one of the pulpits that hangs alongside. The image of Christ is more of faint image and more modern design.